180 then subtract it from 360 to get x and then divide by 2. Or, or you could say it this way, if this arc is 150, then this angle is 75, and three angles of a triangle add up to 180. Oh, I thought you were an extremely long Oh, Why is asking for this angle, uh, not the arc? So that okay. would be 20. It's not. So it would be 80. The arc would be 80. Okay, so that would be 20. This is the angle which forms the arc. Okay? So the angle is half of the arc, and half of 80 is 40. Here, 40 plus 75 is 115, which means this is equal to. Uh, yeah, yeah, that. that 65. Ooh, 65, 65. Now, if you want to check yourself, that means this arc should be twice that measure, which would be 130, and see if these three measures add up to. This was 80, add yes, up to do. 360. Yeah. And they do. Okay, so it's a way that you can check yourself. Totally. <laughs> What's the significance of the two slashes on the lines? It's an isosceles triangle, which means that X and Y are equal to each other. And equal chords have equal arcs. Okay, so there's one. There's two different ways we can go with this. We can approach it. If I know that this bottom arc is 80 degrees, then I know that this vertex angle up here is 40. 40. Okay. And if I know the two remaining angles must be split in half, that means they each have to be 70. <laughs> now, another way that you could have done it is this. Knowing that equal chords create equal arcs, since the circle is 360 degrees, and I've already accounted for 80 of that, I've got 280 degrees left to be split equally, which would be 140 and 140, and these angles will be half of that. Okay? So you can check yourself. Okay. Oh, we're going to do this together because I want to give you a little time to do your own homework. We'll just look at the board, all right? We're going to draw, or I drew... An equilateral triangle. What's an equilateral triangle? All equal. Three equal sides, 60, 60, 60 degree angles. It's inscribed in a circle, and then we drew tangents to points A and C that all met at the same point. Okay, so this is the picture that you came up with. All right, here's my equilateral triangle, ABC. I have a tangent to point A and a tangent to point C, and those two things met at point D. All right? Now, our question is, what kind of a shape is quadrilateral A, B, C, D? Oh, pelagrin. More specifically, rhombus. it's a rhombus. Now, let's talk about why. They're all the angles are bisected. Well, let's watch this. We know that this equals this, right? Right. So we knew that these two angles were equal. We also know that angle A right here creates core, excuse me, arc AC. And angle B also creates arc AC. So they're equal to each other. And since this was equilateral and all these angles are equal, we're 60, 60, 60. And since these are 60, this one has to be 60. And because the two triangles share a common side, through the angle side angle postulate, <coughs> we have two uh, congruent triangles. We have two congruent triangles. Okay? So, that means since alternate interior angles are congruent, <coughs> then these lines are parallel to each other. Since these alternate interior angles are congruent, then these lines are parallel to each other. And because the triangles are congruent, all those lines are parallel. So what kind of four-sided figure has two pairs of parallel sides 
and two pit and all four sides are congruent, but it doesn't have four ninety degree angles. A rhombus. The shape we were trying to get to was a rhombus. You have a question? No, I was, I was going to ask. Like, then it looks like a rhombus. It does look like a rhombus, but we have to prove it. We can't just go by what stuff looks like. Okay, here's your homework. Mm. Dude, really? Nicholas, if you throw it. Why 25? This is a diameter, so 100, x is 30, and then z is 